football on Friday night, very exciting. Uh, you know, state, state male athlete of the year, I believe he was his senior year, so you can imagine what he did on Friday nights and people come to the stands at Southwest to see him play. And, and the community's tight-knit anyway, but when you bring a, a superstar or someone like him and his personality and his ability into the stadium, folks rally around that and just his impact on bringing our community together under Southwest High School was tremendous. How do I know Kendrick? Well, it's a very long story. <laughs> um, my first encounter with Kendrick was in rec football. And um, we were at the top of the league in rec football and um, they were too. So they were talking about this kid across town. And um, I'm like, man, I gotta play this guy, you know? So we make it all the way to the Super Bowl before we play. And it comes down to the very last play of the game. I get the ball, I'm running, and I got one person to beat. And you can guess who that was, right? And I put a move on him, and I thought I got him. I got by him, and he swipes my ankle. <laughs> and I, one foot hits the other, and I fall. They win the Super Bowl. And so that's how I met Kendrick, man. And um, we've been rivals and great friends ever since that time. Yeah. We were at basketball practice, and uh, I told Kendrick, I'm a Tar Heel fan. I said, Kendrick, if I make this shot standing outside of the out of bounds on this baseline, you're gonna to commit to Carolina. So I launched that 25, 30 footer and it was nothing but net. And my story is, that's why he went to Carolina. <laughs> then we were kind of like a package deal coming out of high school. So um, one person thought that, you know, we got this guy, the other one's coming. So um, that's kind of how it was. And uh, even when we were playing ball together, we would try to be on the same side of the field together so that we can kind of have that unspoken language, like you're gonna do that and I'm gonna do this, you know? And so that's really how our relationship was. We've been that way since, like I said, rec football days. So, um, you know, we were college roommates up at Carolina. So, uh, I mean, you know, from the craziest of stories to the uh, PG version of those stories, um, KB, we've been in each other's corners. There was uh, times in football games where it was just me and him looking at each other like, what are we going to do? And um, so, you know, it's one of those things where if you know someone's got your back, you know, you can definitely be who you want to be. And um, he's been a great friend. He's been a great person. His story is uh, one story that I draw strength from. You know, um, KB is extraordinary in any sense of the word. I call KB primetime. I've been calling him primetime since probably that first rec football game. <laughs> Kendrick was able, when he left Chapel Hill, he uh, made it with a couple of the pro teams and did a lot of work with them. He didn't make it to those Sunday afternoons, but his impact on those, uh, with those programs just filtered back to the community. And, and kids running around wanting to be like a high school kid now see this kid that went into the uh, college ranks and then also got to don those professional uniforms as well. And that just has such a positive impact on kids in the community. Uh, we both had a drive to give back to the community. Um, we come from Jacksonville, North Carolina. We love Jacksonville, North Carolina. And um, underneath our eyes, when we were playing football, we would have 910 or the Ville underneath, you know. So it's always been a big thing for us to, as we say, put on for our city, you know. And so, um, and then being where we come from, you know, and um, trying to elevate those from that very same position. You know, being able to touch Kendrick uh, says a lot. A guy from Southwest makes it to college, then makes it to the NFL. Um, for kids to be able to actually see that, touch that, uh, that's a huge thing, man. And so um, it can't be taken for granted. Um, and he didn't have to do a lot of the things that he's done, um, giving back and football camps. and Football ended for both of us, you know, earlier than we wanted to. So. We've been trying to focus on taking that energy, that um, motivation, that inspiration that we had with that, that same work hard attitude uh, to other endeavors. I never got the opportunity to coach Kendrick Burney at UNC, but he was part of a spectacular recruiting class in 2007. As a quarterback, he displayed discipline and leadership. And as a defensive back, he had great eyes and was a fierce hitter. 
But what sets Kendrick Burney apart from others is his intense competitive, competitive spirit. Congratulations, Kendrick, on your induction into the Jacksonville Onslow Sports Hall of Fame. KB, Kendrick Burney, Mr. Burney, Primetime. Listen, man, I love you, bro. This is huge. This is big. Listen. It's not a lot of us out here in this position right now, man. Take this, move forward with it, man. Live in this moment, man. You deserve it. You've been humble. You've worked hard. Now you're here, man. Thank you very much for letting me be a part of this process. I'm extremely humbled to be here doing this for you, man. I love you, man. Let's do it up. Let's party later. You already know how we do. See you. Kendrick, Congratulations, well deserved. Your hard work and your dedication to your sport and to getting better has paid off, not only as an athlete, but as a man that left Southwest High School and went on to the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. You've paved the way for other kids in our community and we look forward to things that you'll be able to bring to Onslow County. And just a great congratulations. And remember, you ended up at Chapel Hill because your basketball coach hit a 25-footer from the baseline. <laughs>